Now, have you ever wanted someone just to come in and take that problem away when you're a property manager? Well, hopefully I might have a little bit of an answer for you today because today we're going to be talking to the team from Cat Stone Hotel Management and hopefully they'll be able to give you a little bit of insights into what they do and maybe you may even consider them. But let's get started. I'm going to introduce you to the fabulous team. Uh, we've got Claire Davies and we've got Nona. Welcome, guys. How are you? Good. Hi, Tracy. We're good, things. Now, how are you going in your part of the world? We're good. It's a little bit like two worlds because we deal with hotels throughout New Zealand. So um, we're based in Nelson and, um, yes, yeah, so we're really privileged here at the moment to um, at be at um, Level 2. And but obviously we're dealing with um, Auckland hotels at, at Level 3. So two worlds. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. Now, I suspect that anyone that was watching this may not actually know who you are. You kind of fly under the radar. Uh, I know who you guys are because I've known both of you for, for some time. But who wants to give us a bit of a rundown? What is Capstone and, and what do you do? Oh, do you want, yeah. No, no, you go, Claire. It's your baby. <laughs> Don't slide <laughs> over it, guys. It's, it's, <laughs> um, no, no, Claire, Claire needs, uh, Claire needs is, is this your story. first day on the job? I'm not sure. <laughs> have a, come on, guys, from the heart. <laughs> okay, so um, Capstone... Um, formed as hotels and resorts back about seven and a half years ago now. Um, we're a hotel management company, but we have kind of three arms to the business. We do full um, property management. We take over the hotel or the lodge or the asset and report back to the owners or shareholders. Um, and within that, we take over everything from HR, um, the day-to-day -day operations, driving business to the property, accounts, everything centralised um, and, yeah, move that business forward. Um, we also have a consulting arm and then also we have another arm of the business, which is sales and distribution, which is basically just driving business to the property, um, heads on beds, really. Yeah. So yep, that, yep, yep. Yeah. And how, how have you, can I just ask on that distribution, this has obviously been a really interesting two years now. We're, we've gone past, we, we were hoping we could talk about one year, but two years now. How have you seen that distribution model? I mean, it, it, we can't even call it a model anymore because it's just been so smashed in a sense you know what does that look like now compared to essentially what it was before um yeah that's an interesting question that's because that's really my role so I'm director of sales and marketing so um prior to COVID my role was very heavily focused on sales in terms of a traditional um travel trade sales model so I was working with the inbound and wholesale side of um, the industry pushing um, commissionable rates through them usually static rate contracts um, working with corporates to a lesser degree be just because our portfolio at that point was mainly leisure focused hotels we didn't have many corporate hotels um, and marketing was a a kind of a smaller aspect of what I did so I did a, I still did a bit of website um kind of building and and content updating and social media marketing and all the rest of it but it was more focused around the sales side of things so really in the last two years it's uh, this situation has has um escalated the need to have really robust systems in place which will drive direct business to the hotels so yep. without so much um kind of staff touch points so we're doing things like um investing in making sure that our systems our channel manager systems are all um you know really um set up correctly and are set up to optimize that direct business but also where there are some travel trades still operating and still putting some domestic business through um uh, making sure that there are channel manager integrations so that they can just make a booking direct through our system without having to call the hotel or email the hotel. Um, also things like uh, making sure properties are on the GDS. So the global distribution system, which allows the corporate side of the industry to access the rates and the availability um, quickly and efficiently. So it's it's been around that really just kind of, um, it was something that we always knew we needed to do and we were doing it piecemeal, I guess, to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it kind of gave us a like, yeah, we need to just get on with this now and make it make it happen because our staff numbers at our hotels have not been as high as they were before. So yeah. 
Yeah, I'd love to, to delve into staff with you, but I think that's a whole new topic. Uh, yeah. It's a national problem. Um, yeah. but, but listening to you talk about the, the, the way that we do sales, it's really interesting because you actually take on board the fact that your business has been modeled around supporting property owners. And that's evolved, no doubt, in time from when you started to, to now. And I think what people are now looking for, are they looking for efficiencies and people with expertise that will, you know, in one respect, actually minimize cost because you come in and you're quite an efficient, lean machine able to, to do a, a role. Now, Claire, I know your background is heavily um, hospitality, food and beverage, and, and Nona, you're definitely, you know, a strong background in, in sales and, and marketing. So between the two of you, you're quite a powerful force, but you, you, you know, you're going out there and, and driving uh, these businesses but what really makes, I guess the question I have for you, what really makes it different between what you do and say a, a hotel chain, essentially? Yeah, so um, I, when I set up the business, there was a bit of a need for that independent hotel um, hotel support or um, hotel management. So anything kind of under 80 rooms, um, because that's not so much viable for some of the bigger hotel um, chains to be involved in just due to, you know, their fees and the structures that they have. And there was definitely a need there for independent hotels where they had a good brand and market, but it just needed um, support and getting it out to market. Um, so all of the marketing dollars that a property that we work with all goes back into their own brand. Quite often you won't even see the Capstone brand anywhere. Um, so it's our job to go in and really, um, I suppose that's our point of difference is a couple of, well, there's a couple of points of difference. One is that we focus on the hotels brand and the mm -hmm. other is we're very good at regional New Zealand. So we understand that you have to work with tour operators, you've got to package up, you've got to bundle up. Um, we know how to be dynamic. We know what the drivers are to drive revenue to those regional properties, which is something that some of the bigger global hotel chains just don't quite, they're not able to do and they're not able mm. to be um, nimble and reactive as what we are within the market because we've got those strong foundations of relationships throughout New Zealand already. So that's probably one of the key things. Um, for us, it's about making a sustainable model, so having long-term relationships. Um, we've got about... Mm. 14 hotels that we work with throughout New Zealand. We also do a lot of consults, which eventually leads into um, management contracts. But, we, yeah, we have had to change, um, a, you know, a bit so over the seven years from, from when we first started. Initially, it was just purely management contracts. And then we added, we could see that people wanted us to, um, wanted our expertise, but didn't necessarily need the management part of it. So, therefore, we set up the sales and distribution part. Um, mm. That's changed again, and then when COVID hit, um, you know, it was really clear that we had too much sales and distribution product, um, which is a different model um, for us versus our management contract, and we really needed to kind of um, balance it out more where we had more management to make the business stronger and, you know, sustainable for years to come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I love the fact that you talk about that um, being – being able to adopt and adapt to the to your environments as well by packaging, and this is something that we're we're seeing a lot of the regional uh, tourism operators or boards really push at the moment because it's it creates that uh, value proposition in regions. And totally agree with you. When it's a big big brand, they're less likely to play in the sandpit nicely with other kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so when they're smaller, it makes it really. You can see some really amazing products that come out mm -hmm. or packages that that come out. Yeah. So you mentioned, and, yeah, yeah, oh, sorry. No, and hotels are really resource thin. They don't have time to go in and pull those packages together, set them up in the back end. You know, there's a lot of work and then market them out, you know, so that's where we're able to come and really assist with that. And that, that's what mm -hmm. we do. We do that exceptionally well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so you've been running the business for seven years. Now, Nona, how long have you been in the business for? Uh, it was my fifth birthday in March. Congratulations. Thanks. You get two more years at seven year itch, hopefully. Not. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so, it's um it's flown by. It's flown by. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So to both of you, I guess the, the question I would really like to know is is that um now in the industry you you you're definitely known and I mean I mentioned earlier you fly under the radar, but you're known for doing some some amazing work. But that comes with experience and you know doing your time in the industry I guess I'd love to know from both of you what has what have you learned 
over time and, and, and what has evolved and, and, you know, kind of what are those things that have popped up that you, you didn't, you thought you knew everything in the industry, but maybe you just didn't? <laughs> well, for me, I'll start while you think about it, Claire. Um, for me, it was learning about hotels because I not didn't have a hotel background at all. As most people who would know me from the industry know, I've worked in for the RTO. I worked for um, wholesaler. I've worked on kind of the inbound side of things so um yeah I, oh I worked for an operator a tourism operator for that was my first role um so I understand how the system works I understand the distribution system really well I understand tourism marketing really well I've got the connections but hotels was a whole new thing for me um so it was yeah it's been an interesting five years um something that's been quite good for me is that as my knowledge has grown the portfolio has grown mm. so um yeah we when I started we had six or seven properties I think Claire maybe yeah. two management contracts and the rest was sales and distribution mm. and now we're at kind of 13 ish 14 we, we you know we've got these sort of touch points with um properties that aren't necessarily on our website that we work with um so yeah I guess that um in answer to your question um everything I've learned everything <laughs> um I think in the last couple of years I've learned to look at things that may have look at everything as an opportunity I guess yep. not discount anything um just as a one-off project or a one-off consult because we've had this mm -hmm. a couple of times now we've done consultation projects with a property because the property owner you know has been like oh I don't know what to do I don't know how to manage this new asset I've purchased or whatever and we've gone in on a three-month contract just to give them a bit of a, a a put a roadmap in front of them if you like for the future mm. and um that's turned into a longer term relationship um and yeah. a management contract so you kind of need to be mindful when you're doing a consult of the foundations that you're laying because they may be the foundations that you're going to be building on you know yep. um so it's got to be right for them but it's also got to be robust and um yeah potentially good for for us to then go in and take them on the next level whether that's as another short-term contract or a longer relationship so it's really interesting because i do feel that uh hotel people are a special breed not in a bad <laughs> way not in a bad way it's just that, that there's so many in, like little details to a hotel yeah. that that not everyone actually understands. And so, Claire, you, what, what would be your little gold yeah. nugget? Um, I mean, we have, we get we get quite, we just had this discussion this morning about how we tend to get quite, we're capstone gets slightly forgotten because we're so involved in all our um, hotels and, you know, we treat them as if they are our businesses. Um, and it's being able to kind of step back out and focus back on capstone. We've had organic growth, which has been really, really good. We haven't had someone out there doing the business development there. Contracts have come to us through word of mouth or connections within industry, which has really suited us. And the and the team has grown. So we've got you know we've got a, someone based up in Auckland now. Um, we've got a great finance team, which is really important for our um, properties. You know accountability and managing costs now so more than ever, um, and making sure that we're running the property as lean as we can to maximise returns, but keep improving the asset as well, which is really important. Um, mm. So you know we kind of have to. What I've learned is we've really got to listen to our owners what their vision is so we can implement it. That's our job. You know, so if they want to build up an asset for sale or if they want to build up an asset to be able to hold long term or complete a refurbishment, that's our job to um you know, set a roadmap, as Nona said, to make sure that that kind of happens. But definitely something that we've realised is that there's a lot of businesses out there that need help um, mm. a lot of running inefficiently. Um, and, you know, um, people sometimes get into this industry not realising the complexities, um, particularly if there's food and beverage involved or, you know, um, being able to make sure that those aspects are managed really tightly is important. Yeah. Yeah, and as in one hand I mentioned that uh, hotel people are a special breed, I have had to lean on you too for, for assistance in, in, in times past in regards to properties because it is just so complex. Uh, and we are seeing more and more as well now, uh, you know, farmers or corporate people just buying accommodation because th there is cheap accommodation out there at the moment because people are just they're tired they want to sell and there's people coming into the industry with just 
zero knowledge or, or zero understanding. And, you know, someone like yourselves is a perfect place for them to start, isn't it? What they've usually got, though, and this is from a from I mean, Claire would know this because she's been you know involved in the industry for a lot longer and has been rubbing shoulders with property developers and hotel owners. But there, I think pretty much all the hotel owners that we work with have got a very strong commercial acumen yep. in their own field, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that they they hold us to account. You know, they're really. Um, even if they don't necessarily understand the hotel sector, they understand business and they understand what a balance sheet should look like. So, mm. you know, it, it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting thing really, because it's about us kind of taking them on the journey to becoming a hotel owner almost. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Taking their account, their head out of the business that they own, whether that be an IT company or whether it be a retail chain or a, you know, work in banking or whatever it may be, but kind of helping them understand what's required to make their hotel successful, use their um, acumen. Does that make sense, kind of? No, that makes total sense. And and it's quite interesting because we we have seen – a lot of a lot of people that have had previous businesses. I mean, I I was recently talking to someone that bought a property down here. They used to own a muffin break up in uh, Auckland, and so they sold the muffin break to to have a lifestyle change to buy a a lodge, and so. They do go from one business to another, so there is that element. But there's also that element of people that just, you know, uh, you go to motels and you ask people, how do you, how did you get into managing this motel? And just like had enough of nine to five. So we've got different layers or levels of people coming into into the industry. And I think, you know, one thing that I really love about what I see from the outside from Capstone is is just the the genuine um, generosity in knowledge and the openness for people to come to you so whether it works or not uh and i think that's really important in this industry because we we were on this conveyor belt and fast pace and it was ruthless pre-covid and covid has kind of made us go back to to basics and it's about relationships it's about being kind to each other and it's about supporting each other and that's something that I, i feel that you guys do really well it's um, really interesting, Tracy, because we're not just, you know, it's just not capstone getting through this COVID environment. It's actually, mm. we're actually having to do business plans and um, navigate all the properties that we work with. So, you know, um, that first, you know, lockdown, we're obviously <laughs> budgets, re-forecasting, working out, you know, redundancy structures, working out how do we how do we get this business to be able to get to the other end where there's going, we know there's going to be light, but we, how do we get mm. there? Um, to navigate through it, so keeping its cost to them, you know, making sure financially it's a viable business to carry on with, um, yep. you know, and being able to, um, you know, when we have these bursts of um, we're at level two or at level one, how do we maximise them really quickly from a cash flow perspective because cash is king in this environment for our hotels. So that's, yep. you know, that's something that we've really got to, um, It's you know, it's been, a, you know, it's kept the team extremely busy. We've probably never all worked as hard as what we have over these last, um, two, you know, mm. two years really. Well, we navigate um, businesses through, and they're all different. We've got to make some tough calls, you know. Where we might have been a seven-day operation, some properties have had to go to, you know, five days, or where we used to be open for um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Actually, we can't be a community service all the time. We, you know, it's not viable for us to open this series for lunches. So, you know, we've had to make some tough calls. Look at the businesses with fresh eyes and actually work out well, where where is it? Um, you know, where are we making money, and where are we? Mm. You know, where does that, you know, where it's not so profitable, where do we need to cut, cut the strings there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and look, that, that leads me into a question, sorry, no, it just it leads into the question of, of actually COVID itself and, and you know, that the work that you obviously just, just mentioned was what you were doing for others. But if we go back to 2020 March, what did COVID mean to Capstone? What, what was the journey that you, you both had to take? Oh, you know, it wasn't good time. I mean, we did I about, think that noise just gave it away. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, we, were, yeah. we were working probably from 6.30 in the morning to about 10 o'clock at night. Um, we did, I personally had to oversee about 200 redundancies throughout the group. Um, and some of those had to happen over Zoom. You know, it was pretty awful times. Um, a lot of uncertainty, I suppose. We didn't realise what the domestic market was going to do. So when we, um, you know, when we went into that big 
sharp lockdown, we didn't we didn't know what was going to happen, whether we were going to get any financial support in the way of wage subsidies or resurgence packages from government. We didn't know what the domestic market was going to look like. We just didn't know anything. We didn't know whether we were going to get support from the banks. Um, so it was really, really tough. So there was a lot of um, real... You know, all of a sudden, I'd go from talking to owners on a monthly or bi-monthly basis, they were wanting to talk to me every day after the one o'clock update. Um, so there was a real lot of, um, you know, back-to-back Zooms with the team, three forecasting cash flows, trying to apply for wage subsidies and interpret how they were implemented um, because they kept changing back then. Yeah, it just wasn't a good time. Um, and also support the staff on the ground um, as well while they went through the journey. And people were scared. We didn't know how to, um, you know, we didn't know all the rules and regulations around COVID. So it was a real, um, it's definitely not a time I want, would want to go back to. We've definitely gone into these current lockdowns with a different perspective of our mm. wellbeing. Yeah. Yep. yep. I think the um, that first sort of six months for me, probably for all of us, was, was all about adrenaline and fear and mm. just making sure that we kept you know things moving whatever it was it just felt like you just had to do something just to try and you know make things move along whereas now coming through the other side of that and being quite shattered and exhausted really it's about resilience and about trying to make sure that we pace ourselves because this is you know probably another well who knows how long but um yeah we just need to make sure that we're we're still here in two years time all of us, all the hotels, all the, you know, as many of the staff as we can keep, all those relationships that, you know, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think one of the things, no, resilience is a really important, you know, word to use here because everyone's tired. There's mm-hmm. no staff to go around, so there's no mm-hmm. relief to give people breaks and, and managers are working overtime, staff are working mm-hmm. overtime, you know, so it's it's really, really quite quite draining for a lot of people and then we're still expected to stand up and deliver a high quality service Mm. yeah Yeah. and and yeah sorry no no. I was gonna sorry I was gonna say back to the previous point about um why one of the things that you noted about what we do and our willingness to share knowledge which I have to say right back at you Tracy Green um you are pretty much in the same pool there I think the 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 um the important thing about that is we would all rather see someone succeed or go forward in a positive manner than flounder and potentially mm-hmm. fall off the edge because the business couldn't, you know, if it was all that was needed was a, you know, a phone call or a come and have a coffee with us or mm-hmm. pick our brains, you know, that's kind of the door was always open really. And that, yeah, that has to be, um, at the front forefront because at the end of the day we've all got to get it through together and we're a, we're going to be a stronger industry if there's more of us you know and we're a small industry you know yeah yeah small, you know you've got to look after um yeah yeah know, yeah we look after each other it's really important yeah yeah and I think one of the things that we don't know the true impact of COVID yet when we look at visitation businesses and what's lost because there was there was talk that there was over twenty two thousand visitor businesses, so that's a combination of be a motel activity, um, you know, rental cars. It's just a big. It was a big business, and we knew that we we employed quite a large percentage of of uh, you know New Zealanders or, or even travellers. But we don't know what the wash up is of that just yet. And I think we won't really know. You know, we we hear mm-hmm. of uh, surveys being done, but then all we know is is that the number of people responding to those surveys is getting less, uh, and we just don't really have a clear picture of how much damage has happened to our industry. Something that's concerning to to us, and we, Claire and I talked about this last week actually, was um, the next generation coming through of hospitality staff, hotel, tourism trained, you know, that have gone through the polytechnics or whatever I know here locally they're really struggling to get students to actually go on those courses because it's just not seen as a viable career at the moment unsurprisingly but we need to really consider that because we are going to be in a situation where we're going to have um a real dearth of of good staff to employ in the future and to keep the industry going 
Um, so education. Yeah. And I know that they've just announced it and um, NZQA. Um, is it NZQA? Trans- or NCEA? Yeah, 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 NCEA. Yeah. Um, but that's great. Where are they going to get the students from? How are they going to appeal to them? Um, how are they going to appeal to young people to? Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's almost needs to be like a a traineeship that allows people to come and try. Uh, There's a lot of vocational work that occurs here in Marlborough as well, and it's it's giving uh, young people the opportunity to go into a sector and see if they like it and and also actually fail at it if they don't like Mm -hmm. it, and it's okay because they've still got enough time to go off and do Mm. something else. Yeah, and we've definitely, I know at the hotel levels, uh, really focused on developing and we were fully aware that we may only have, uh, you know, a staff member for two or three years at one of our hotels, but we want to make sure we're, that we're empowering them while they're there and find out what their path is and um, to enable them to, yeah, go on to some better long-term um, position. So it's definitely about where there's an opportunity to move people around our hotels. We definitely do that. Um, yeah, and that's some. We, you know, we, we're constantly talking about how we can support our local um, polytechnic and um, tourism mm. students within the region, and we'll continue to do that. Yeah, I think that's really important. It's our job to try to assist yep. women and help um, bring people through the industry. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really, yeah. yeah, and look, if we think about where we've all come from, at some point in time someone has helped us along our road mm. so mm. It's, it's nice to be able to you know essentially give back in some yeah. way shape or form yeah yep. absolutely yeah and now I've got one last question for you because I've, I have enjoyed this and I've, I've actually taken quite a few notes that I would love to have another conversation at some date because there's just oodles that are coming out of you guys but if you had a crystal crystal ball <laughs> Yeah, you know where I'm going. Yeah, every day. Uh, Where do you think we're heading? Where do you think this is all going? What what do you predict for the future? Um, Look, I think New Zealand's going to bounce back with some strong tourism. It's just going to be a timing thing. I think um, the international trade as far as tour groups and things like that, I think that's going to be a lot slower at coming back on board. That's going to take quite a few years. Um, But I think definitely that FIT travel international, I think – it will come back. Um, there's always going to be the cautious ones that may never travel again or might not travel for a number of years. But I think it's going to be a, bit, a lot more expensive to go travelling. I think that's definitely something that's um, that everyone's going to be really aware of. Um, but I think, you know, over the next year, I think we're going to be in a transition working through COVID and, um, yeah, repositioning where we are in the market and, you um, getting ready, ideally, for when, you know, people come back again. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, look, I'm positive about it. I think we're just, it's just, you know, we're going to have another good year of um, working through things, I think, though. Yeah, 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 totally agree. Yeah. What do you think? None of you? Um, I think, I think, um, I mean, it's a sort of fairly commonly talked about thing that the VFR will be the first to come back because it's an emotionally driven Mm -hmm. reason Mm -hmm. to travel. But the thing that's um, going to be interesting is that they're going to be coming to visit their friends and relatives who have been dedicated domestic tourists who have revisited the lodge in the national park or the cycle trail on the West Coast or whatever. So maybe, you know, they will actually take the time to go off and do those things again or recommend them in an even greater way than they did before. Because I think when, you know, both you and I, Tracy, are from overseas, if we've got people visiting from our home countries we always want to show off the region or where we live right but we're also but now we've got so many more you know that the yeah I, I think that will be um that will be interesting I think it the VFR market will be very a rich scene um Mm. The thing that I guess for some of our hotels is that's that's a challenge is the corporate market although it actually came back a bit quicker than I thought it would. Um, yep. So, yeah, I, I think that will probably see us through to a degree. Yeah. I think for many, the corporate has been the key. I think after uh, the most recent round of lockdowns, it's been a little bit slower to come back. Uh, yep. And definitely, I know, working in the ski industry with some of my clients, uh, the second lockdown of the South Island was definitely, um, it didn't return. 
the same way. Um, so it's had some impacts there. But yeah. I still believe that corporate's got to keep moving. We need to keep the economy going. So they're going to keep moving stuff around. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. We need to get the corporates back and incentive and retreat style business that, mm-hmm. you know, that's gold for the hotels. Um, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately for the, you know, the hospitality sector, it's going to be who's got the biggest checkbook to get them through, I'd say. Um, it's going to be yeah, a bit totally. of a, yeah, unfortunately, which is really sad. Um, I think, well, but but one thing that I'm really looking forward to here is, is that, that, that we are seeing new things pop up. We are seeing exciting new concepts come coming to, to the front. Um, people that have lost their jobs are, are creating their own businesses, and I think we are going to see a lot more, uh, entities that are doing tours with a twist, uh, they're going to get back to that place where it's about the emotional connection and the authenticity. It's not about volume, it's quality. Mm. And, you know, whilst we, you, I totally agree with all your points, both of you, about the time that this is going to take, uh, mm. but I, there, there's something exciting as well. Yeah, we've definitely seen um, for a number, particularly down this region, you know, anything that's free. So you can go out and do the great walks or go out and do the national parks or um, cycling, you know, anything that's free. Kiwis seem to be gravitating to those things, which is great because that's getting people out and about to the regions, which is it's really needed. Um, So because, you know, they don't usually get that corporate business. So really heavily rely on that leisure business to be able to kind of get them through all year. Um, So that's great to see and definitely a lot more operators working in that space, which is, um, you know, it's, it's great stuff. So, yeah, you're right. Right, there's definitely a lot yep. more that have popped up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you. I really appreciate you guys, both of you, taking the time out of your, your busy schedule. I know, uh, Nona, I've been watching you trying to get to Auckland and then not getting to Auckland and then getting to Auckland and not getting to Auckland. Um, so life for you is a little bit of a yo-yo as uh, the sales director. Uh, Claire, maybe a little bit more, again, behind the scenes, so I have no idea where you are or what you do. <laughs> Nor do <But> we. <laughs> But I do really appreciate it. I think you guys have really shown just in a very short amount of time the depth of what Capstone has to offer and and the complexities of what COVID has brought to your business and the ever-evolving stance you need to take to keep moving your business forward and the longevity and the support you provide others. So I really want to say a big thank you. Uh, Thank you especially for taking this time no doubt we will get to see you again, both of you. Uh, but until you know, until then, do you want to have any last dying words that you would like to share with anyone before we we wrap up? No, just thank you. Tracy. Absolutely great. Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep positive. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think um, if I think if you need help, reach out. I mean, that's yeah. the big catch cry at the moment, right? Just reach out. Don't be ashamed or nervous or, oh, just, yeah. Just There's a lot of great people in that industry, particularly, yeah. you know, and within the regional tourism bodies, you know, definitely they can point you into the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Now, am I right in saying you don't have a Facebook page for Capstone? Correct. We okay, talked so about what this I'll... morning, but we've got a fabulous LinkedIn page, Tracy. Right. Well, I will make sure that I uh, I connect Capstone on LinkedIn, but also I will put your website in the comments for if anyone that wants to have a bit of a, a look. Uh, but definitely, if they are interested, reach out to either Claire or Nona. It is a great tool, even if it's just for a coffee date, just to understand how they can help your business. Now, to everyone watching, if you do like what we what we are talking about, please like, share, comment. Or if you have a topic or you want us to talk to someone, reach out and let us know who that is and we will make sure that we give it a good red hot crack of actually tackling any topic or any person that we could bring online to interview. But until then, we'll see you next week. I just want to say again a big thank you to Claire and Nona and we will see you guys next time. See you later, everyone. See you.